This and all talks at the 2019 JavaScript for WordPress conference are brought to you in part by our sponsors Pantheon, a high-performance hosting platform with agile developer tools. Check them out at pantheon.io. What is up, everyone? Here we go back at it. I am so excited for this next talk. I'm excited for this whole day in general and this track in specific. We are continuing on with our headless WordPress track here at the JavaScript for WordPress conference. Our next presenter, Mohammed Mohsen, is has started using React quite a while ago and WordPress for the last couple of years, and he loves working with it. He's a developer at RT Camp, the only VIP agency in Asia, the only WordPress VIP agency in Asia, and a great team of developers. And I've got to know this guy a little personally too, because he's also the lead developer over at Gatsby WP Themes. We've been porting WordPress themes over into Gatsby themes to make it easier for you. But he's also done some amazing work with Next.js, um, with building apps, all sorts of cool things. And I am really excited that we are going to have a talk today on using WordPress with client or with server-side JavaScript. Such a huge topic, and I'm just excited to get going. So without further ado, let me turn it over to Mohammed here. Please uh, say hi, and then we will get right into it, my friend. Sure. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Thanks for having me. So my presentation is server-side React for WordPress. Firstly, a little bit about me. My name is Mohammed Mohsin and I am a React developer at RTCAN, the only VIP WordPress agency from Asia. We do awesome stuff with WordPress and React and many other technologies for enterprise clients in WordPress all over the world. I'm also the lead developer for Gatsby WordPress Themes, a project initiated by our very own Zach Gordon, which is a cool project. He, he just mentioned about it. I also write for Smashing Magazine, and I also am an expert reviewer for Smashing Magazine. That's where I come from, Colombo, Sri Lanka. So it's an island in the Indian Ocean, below India. So in my free time, I'd like to take photos. So this was a photo I took at my previous workplace. So three birds sharing a secret. Uh, this was this is not me. I don't know surfing, but you can do kite surfing if you are if you come to Sri Lanka. So this was taken in northwestern part of Sri Lanka. Moving on. So server side React for WordPress. So we'll touch about what is server side exactly mean. Is it like PHP server side or is it something different? We'll look at that. And also, I won't be going into React deep because. React was already discussed in yesterday's workshop and uh, like by the other speakers today. So I won't go into like the basics of React, but we'll touch about what is WordPress, what is uh, server-side. Okay, server-side React for WordPress. So what does server-side mean here? So is it referring to server-side as in PHP or Java or ASP.NET or is it something different? So let's see. Is it is it something that we already know or is it different? Okay, when you say server-side rendering, the initial render of your page is coming from the server. So your JavaScript or your React is already pre-rendered in the server, in the Node.js server. So what about the subsequent request? Does it hit the server every time? Does it get rendered at the server in every time like PHP? It, is, it is, isn't. So what happens is the initial render it comes from the server and the subsequent renders all come from the client side. So what happens is it loads the content from the server, Node.js or serverless server, and then it renders as a client side React application from there onwards. So we have rendering of React on client as well as the server. So that's what it means. So server side rendering means the initial server rendering comes from the server subsequent from client. So why do we do server-side rendering? There has to be a reason why we, we are, did we get bored of client-side rendering? Or what is the reason for server-side rendering? Let's see. So first reason I would say is performance. So when the initial render comes from the server, it is already built. The page is already built and just the HTML is coming to your browser. So it is highly performant for many applications. So people love the performance that server-side rendering brings. 
it's also good for SEO because when you have a standard create React app based application, what happens is only a blank page is given to your client at the initial loading. So just a blank page comes to your browser and then the JavaScript loads and the JavaScript will render the whole HTML. So what the, brow what the indexers see, what the search crawlers see, the, the search engine crawlers is a blank page. So when we do server side rendering, the whole page is visible to the crawlers. So it is a big plus. Also, when you share posts or pages on Facebook or any other social media, it gives a whole snippet of the application if you do server side rendering. If you do client side rendering, it will not be able to show the whole content. So that's the three main benefits of server side rendering. So we have so much win. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Uh, how to server side render in React? So we had to consider a few things. So most of the developers who are used to React are used to create React app or any client side rendered applications. So the server side rendering is or maybe new to them. So a few things you have to take in consideration. Is first thing you have to have Node.js. So your application has to sit on top of Node.js. And then we need to have routing for it. You can use Express or any other router for it. And then we have to do this method, react dump server dot render to string to render to the server. So if you are pulling out your own implementation, we have a lot of things to consider. Like for example, you have to take care of routing with Express or any other routers. You have to take care of port splitting, which can be a huge headache or something you have to extra you to learn. You have to look at webpack configuration, Babel configurations, and many more. And you have to look at deployment, which can be uh, hard or easy based on what you choose and what you are comfortable with, and many, many, many more things. So, you, I mean, this is what you feel when you have to look at all these things, which are like extra to what you have been used to, right? So, what about using a framework, right? So, framework means it's very easy to get started. Like uh, everything is done for you. Code splitting is done for you, and routing, and many other things are already done for you. And you, the, like this, the framework has already solved all your hard problems. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Like for example, you don't have to configure Webpack, you don't have to configure Babel or your any other uh, code splitting or any other configuration. So you're left with solving your startup's own problem. I mean, you don't have to figure out how the infrastructure works or the uh, the like configuration work. You are left with solving the code problems. You know the actual problem that you wanted to solve initially. So you are enjoying an optimized configuration for free, right? What a great idea. <laughs> okay. So now the framework. Work. What framework to use, right? So there are a few server side frameworks that are popular. The first thing is uh, by Jared Palmer is Razzle. Razzle can be used with not only React, but also Angular or Vue or Elm or any other library or framework. It is a great choice. So also we have React Server. Honestly, I haven't got into React Server uh, deeply, so I don't know about it. And Next.js. Next.js is our choice. Be uh, the main reason is because it is battle tested. Like huge people use it, and I have personal experience with it. And the experience of developing with Next.js, the developer experience is great. And it is done by a great company, Zeit. So it has big wins here. And yeah, like a lot of support and a lot of uh, documentation and many reasons. So uh, if you noticed, uh, I have missed Gatsby here. The reason is because Gatsby does not do runtime server side rendering. Gatsby does server side rendering at build time. So it will build your whole application and render it as a static application. So what is different from Gatsby to this is in Next.js, for example, you would render your application from a Node.js server, not as a static application, but as a dynamic application where each time you request a page, it will build the page on the server and give it to you. 
whereas Gatsby will already build all your pages and serve as static files. That is the difference between Next.js and Gatsby. So Next.js, what does it give you? Next.js is a lightweight framework for static and server rendered React applications. So uh, an overview of Next.js. So it gives server-side rendering for free. By default, it is server-side render. So you don't have to configure any single thing for it to re render on the server. It is already rendering on the server. It has automatic code splitting and also prefetching, which is great. Prefetching means it will uh, already fetch your pages before you even click on them. So if you have a Next.js application, you have a pages route, pages directory. Inside of this directory, you will have components, React components. So every single React component inside of the pages directory is a route in Next.js application. For example, if you have index.js in your pages directory, it will become the home page. If you have about.js, it will become the about page. And whatever name you call here will become the route in your Next.js application. So uh, it has a, a lifecycle method called get initial props, which we'll look at shortly, which is an easy way to fetch your data, data fetching. And it has the fact and babble out of the box. So for free, it is configured, and you don't have to worry about it. Unless you want to configure custom webpack or Babel, you would look at your configuration. Otherwise, it's free. It's great for micro frontends. So micro frontends are basically, um, you don't build a monolithic Next.js application, but you, face, you replace parts of your previous website with micro frontends. So for example, a specific page will be a Next.js application. So you don't, it's similar to microservices for backend. So with micro frontends, you replace parts of your application step by step, and then you move forward. And Next.js is a great choice for such uh, instances. So who is using Next.js? Um, does anyone have a guess who uses Next.js? So you can sound it off in the comment section. So I'm going to reveal it. OK, so all these awesome and great companies are using Next.js. For example, we have GitHub, we have British Airways, we have Uber, Nike, we have Domino's, Adidas, we have Facebook itself, Odd Zero. I mean, all these awesome companies like Elastic and Twitch and AT&T are using Next.js. So we are resting on the shoulders of giants, I mean, even the Next.js is by a giant. Zeit and giants are using, so we are on the shoulders of giants, right? Okay. So now comes headless WordPress. We discussed about our front end framework, so we are going to talk a little bit about headless WordPress. So this is WordPress, and is this headless WordPress? <laughs> if you look at this analogy, the, the head part of the Lego man is the browser. What you see in the browser is what is removed off. So when it comes to headless WordPress, there is no display of your WordPress content. So you don't develop a WordPress theme. That was, that's what headless WordPress means. You consume WordPress data as JSON, and JSON is the interface between your WordPress data and your client application. So to do headless WordPress, um, like it's great for single page applications. So you build an application with React or Angular or Vue or any other framework, and WordPress, rest, uh, WordPress is a reliable backend for all these applications. Not only for a single page applications, for mobile applications as well. If you are building a mobile application with React Native or Android or iOS, WordPress can serve as a great headless CMS for your application because of the a plug and play architecture because of all these things that they're used to. WordPress is also open source and free, and it is such a great uh, backend for your mobile applications or your single page applications. So, with headless WordPress, you can keep your front end separate from your back end. So, your WordPress will be separate from your front end application. So, it is also good for scalability and security and many other things. It can also act as a great 
backend for your Gatsby application, which I'm sure Alexa and all the other speakers will be addressing. Okay. When we have a headless WordPress, we have two choices here, the REST API and GraphQL. So let's talk about the differences between the WordPress REST API and WP GraphQL. Firstly, a little bit introduction about WP GraphQL. It is an awesome plugin by my good friend, Jason Ball. He has worked tirelessly with on this plugin and he is now part of Gatsby team, which is great news for all of us and for himself. So congratulations to Jason Ball. Okay. So with the WordPress REST API, we have multiple endpoints. For example, you would have an endpoint for posts, you would have endpoint for pages, an endpoint for media, an endpoint for taxonomy, an endpoint for categories, and all these things, of products and so on. With WP GraphQL, you have just a single endpoint, and it is slash GraphQL. So with one endpoint, you will fetch all your different types of data. With WordPress REST API, you have multiple fetch requests based on what the data you want. For example, let's say you want to fetch a post, and you want to fetch the author of the post, and the featured media of the post. Uh, and so on. But with a WP GraphQL, you have a single fetch. So you fetch once by asking exactly the data that you want, and you would get no more, no less. So with REST API, you would get unwanted fields. For example, if you fetch posts and you want only the title and content, you would also get excerpt, you would also get published date, you would also get a featured media ID, and so on. But with WP GraphQL, you get exactly the fields that you want. So it's also like less load on your server. It is cheaper for, um, you know, faster and less load on your server. Yeah, the next point is that WordPress REST API is slower and WP GraphQL is faster. Uh, the only downside, I would say, or the limitation for most people would be that REST API is already part of WordPress Core, which was made into, baked into Core in 2016. It was, it was earlier part of plugin, and then in 2016, it became a part of the WordPress Core. But WP GraphQL is a plugin by Jason Ball and his and, and team. So that is something you have to get used to. You have to install a plugin and work with the plugin. Moving on. OK, I'll talk about a project that we started at RTCamp last month. So it's called WP Decoupled, where we made it basically as a learning experience and also a proof of concept for decoupling WordPress with an XJS on the front end and WordPress as a GraphQL, WP GraphQL at the back end. So what is WP Decoupled uh, feature? So it has server and client side rendered React, which is Next.js. It uses WP GraphQL at the back end it has offline support. I'll show you. It features products from WooCommerce via WP GraphQL. By the way, it is WooCommerce for WP GraphQL is a plugin by Jeffrey Taylor, who is part of the WP GraphQL community. So thanks to him. And it has cart and checkout feature. And it also has serverless. We'll look at that. So what does the architecture look like for WP decoupled? So we have the browser on, on your right hand side. So the browser will request data from Next.js. Next.js sits on either Node.js or a serverless Lambda. It can sit on now serverless or as a node server. It can work either way. So Next.js would run on the server and also on the browser. I mean, Next.js on the server, but it can also do client side rendering as well. Uh, Next.js would uh, fetch data from WP GraphQL as GraphQL data, and WP GraphQL will fetch data from WordPress and MySQL database. So that's how the architecture looks like. Browser to Next.js, Next.js to WP GraphQL, then the JSON data goes to Next.js, and the, it is displayed on the browser. So what about going serverless? So what does serverless mean? When I first heard this name serverless, I was totally confused. I thought, how come a web application will work without a server? So after some learning, I mean, maybe it's not the greatest name, right? So we will see that no server or server, no. There is a server, but 
we don't maintain the server. That's the meaning of serverless. So what is serverless with now? Now is a serverless platform by Zeit, the company behind Next.js. So the same people are behind Next.js as well as now. So with now you have one command in OW and it pushes to your serverless platform. It has support for local development with Nowdev, which was introduced a few months back. Nowdev is a local server where you can use for development on your local machine. So from next year's eight onwards, it has serverless support and that's what we are going to look at from now. If you use serverless option, every page in, inside your pages directory becomes a serverless function and it works like that as a serverless function. Okay, let's get started. So we start with now in it, it will create a serverless uh, application. We select the next JS option and we use get initial props for data fetching and we next link to link to the other pages. And let's look at the demo now. Okay, so this is the site I'm going to look at, wokamostore.onitspay.com. It's going to come from here, and I'm going to start up. So I'm here already. Now in it. You can see the screen, it'll be awesome. So now in it is the first command. It is fetching the examples for now in it. It has a bunch of examples and Apollo, Bash, Charge, and Create React App. You can also create React App and host it on now. So I'm going to go to Next.js and create, select Next.js. Okay, so success initialize Next.js, CD Next.js, and now dev. To develop CD Next.js and now dev, to deploy CD Next.js and now. So I'm going to Change the name a bit. MV XJS JS for W Con JS for WP Con React. All right. CD JS for. I'm going to open Visual Studio Code here. So now then, right? We saw that. So if for you to be able to do the now init command, you have to go here, zite.co slash now global deployment, global serverless deployment. And you can see here deploy is in seconds, mono repo ready, built in CDN, more code changes, and so on. Say goodbye to servers, one repository to rule them all. So what you have to do is you to download the It download this uh, now application for it to work. So I have already downloaded the now application. So I'm going to do now in it and I've opened Visual Studio Code now. So now then. Let's see whether anyone has questions here. Okay, no one has questions so far. Now that is, uh, we'll set up a development environment for your application. It will open up a development environment on localhost 3000. Okay, in this case, localhost 3001. So next year's example on now dot now dot now two two point zero. So go to about me. So I'll just show you how how the directory structure looks like. So we have a pages directory and a components directory. 
and node modules and dot next which is uh, built by next.js so the index directory has very simple you don't have to import react if you're using an next.js application react is already there in the context so here is a link from next.js and we saw that and header so import header and link header is coming from here header is just next.js example now on now 2.0 that's the header and this is the link so this is the next index application so the header is important here and so there's a link here and it says go to about me so that is a go to about me we go to about me this is another page of the server side render example you access you access the client side you can reload to see how the page changes so i reload here it says client side you can notice here and when i reload it it says server side so what does it mean so i'll go here to about page so it says here so i was talking about get initial props so get initial props is a method where you can get is server based on window so window is only on the client so if window is undefined it means it is on the server so get initial props will return props so it is returning is server prop as a boolean it will be a boolean because it is type of win window is undefined or not so it will return true or false so this is another page of this example so you access access date client side or server side is coming here from this dot props dot post today okay you access the client side over server side so server side means if server is true it will become server side otherwise it's client side so I'll, I'll show it again so you go here it is client side first of all when you refresh it it comes from the server so i'll also show the page source okay it's development so it won't be available okay now let's get into development so i'll sh i'll demo pa some parts of it and i will copy over the rest of it okay so let's get started index dot get initial props i'm gonna first of all install axios Get initial props. It's going to be an async await function. URL is going to be this site. Graph viewer. Response is going to be SEOS. URL is going to be URL. Method is going to be post. And I have to write a GraphQL query here. So let's look at how to write GraphQL queries now. So if I go to plugins here, I've gone and installed WP GraphQL and WP Graphical and WP GraphQL for WooCommerce. So I go to graphical products. So this is how you write GraphQL queries, nodes, and I'm gonna ask product ID, name, price. That'll do for now. And I'll also ask for the image. And I wanna show the first, this means, I show the first 50 items, but there are no 50 items, there are 12 items. So it will show me the first 12 items. So I'm going to copy the query here. Query is going to go here. So log and it has to be waiting. Response 
Let me see if it works. Is on three thousand. So it is coming from the previous cache. Cash. Should resolve an object but found undefined. Okay. Let's see. So it has a console of it here. So I think I have to get it as a data. So I'm gonna press the data dot node. So data. Here. Okay, data and again data, then products and nodes. The data, products, nodes. There you have all the data coming in. I'm going to be looping over the data and displaying it on the page. Okay, so we are we have to just we have to save it as products and nodes. And in the in here, products, products, but map, product. Call it H three. Product of name. Okay, so we have all the product names coming here. Price and what else did we get? Price and I'll also show the ID. Style it with as two hundred two hundred. So the query is okay, source URL. Source capital U. Okay, we have all this, and the one here is each child in the list should have a unique key prop. So I have to have a key here. 
So here I can call it product.id. So the warning is gone now. So we have the product item and price and the image coming from here. Okay, now I'm going to be copying over some code because it's too, uh, not, there's not enough time to develop the whole application. So I'm going to be copying some code here. And I'll first of all copy the code and show you what is going on. Okay, so firstly I'll get the components. Then static. Styles. Before copying the rest, I'll just copy a cater JSON and paste it here. And I'll run. Yeah. Copy it over, build, build base. Static and styles, static styles, utils. Validator. And base. Also copy over next up config and now JS. Yes. I'll be explaining it to you now. So for an XJS application, the pages directory is compulsory. It has to have an index page that is a start starting page, and then we are using the products page here. Okay, and then the static folder is for like icons, these are the icons we're using, and for different images or for static CSS files. So apart from that, we have a utils folder, which has functions, which are used for the cart, and we have a validator for the different checkout fields, and also an is empty object for checking for empty. That is the utils. So we have components. So components are for cart and cart page, this is the cart page, cart item, add to cart button, and cart icon. The icon on the, I'll show you. So then we have checkout page and all these components inside the checkout page. And we have a home page. These are the categories we are using. And layout page, which is a footer and a header and the layout. Layout is like, it will wrap the other pages. And we have styles. Okay, it is not used. Okay, so I'm going to be starting it. Hopefully, it should work. If everything's okay. I'll show you one more thing. So we have the pages here, an index. So we are using something called Apollo. And Apollo is a GraphQL client and it makes things very easy for us. So we have in-memory cache, which is, used, which is used by Apollo. And we are setting the configuration is coming from client config. So I have to add that as well. So I'm going to quickly end that. Client config. Okay. So client config is defining the routes. And so it is given to here as GraphQL URL. And when we are fetching now, we fetch in get initial props as await client, client.query. Client is coming from 
a follow client, okay? Follow client and then query, and query is this. This is a query. So the products query. And here it is tagged with GQL. So GQL means it's a GraphQL tag. So we are returning the results as result of data that products are known, like earlier, but earlier we were using Axios, now we are using um, Apollo. And so what we are doing here is passing the link. So link here means, href here means, so we are using product and slug is item.slug dash hyphen product ID. So in the as property, as attribute, we see we say how it shows in the browser and this is how it actually works. So it actually it goes to the product page and it passes this as a query param. But it uses pretty from uh, query param, pretty URLs and it shows like this on the browser. So on the product page, it will get the, from the context, it will getting the slug which we pass from the index page and then getting the splitting and getting the last ID from the query param and then sending it as a variable for GraphQL query. And then we sent as ID here and this particular product will be fetched from here and we are returning this product and then we are showing this product here. That is how the single product page works. So it is still setting up Shouldn't take so long normally, but now it's taking for a long time. So I don't have time to uh, like the whole, code the whole item. So I'm just going to show just the code for some parts, and then we have that to cart button here. And that to cart button works like this so it gets the local storage items and then passes it and then quantity is normally one and then we update the card so update card is another method from utils so you can take a look at util functions and then all the update card methods will be there okay it's taking a long time so i'll run from another project which i have It is already configured, but same thing, but already configured. Okay, it is built here. So I'm going to show it to you now. So this is a static image and static text. And these are the products. So when you click on add to cart, so it automatically updates the cart here. So add this as well, it automatically add that two items and 36 has, and add add to card again, three items, and add to card, add to card, add to card, add to card. So I go to a single product, and this is called in progress. So this is a progress bar. And from here also you can add to card. Okay, the style is just okay. Add to card from here, and this is the card page. So from here you can increase the quantity, and it updates the item automatically and all these things automatically. You can remove an item and it updates the total and the subtotal automatically. And let's go to checkout. So this is the checkout. And so it also has validation, for example, so all these validation are working awesome. So kudos to Imran Sayyid.
Okay. Okay. It's a variation by one. Okay. Everything is okay. Yeah, everything is okay. It will send the sanitized data. So we didn't we didn't complete. I mean the backend for click checkout, and once that is done, we will be updating the product. So that was the demo, and sending it live is just a single command. So you just put now, and then it will go live. So I'll show it. So we configured it from our Articamp account. So this is on now, now serverless. So the same thing is here. This was configured by my, my friend just now, Imran. So that is the demo. And I'm going to be talking back to my talk. So who is behind WP Decoupled? It's my friend Imran Sayed who just uh, showed the configured the now.sh for serverless. Myself, Divyaraj, and Sayed Taki. So I played a small part in this, but as a team, we achieved this project. So these are some links. So first link is the demo link to is the demo link. So this is the project. Articamp, uh, our github.com Articamp, WP decoupled. So please check out this project and give us a, a start. So, and then the GitHub repo, the demo link that I just showed you, the GitHub repo, and Zite Learn Next is another great resource for learning next year. Zite now is what I just showed you, hosting on Zite, and WP GraphQL by Jason Ball and my article for server side rendering React for Log Rocket. So, so Articamp is hiring. We have an opening for senior React developer. So if you are excited about projects that I showed you just now or other WordPress and React projects, please head over to rtg.camp slash join and hope to see you at Articamp one day. Thank you very much, Zach, for having me. And thanks to everyone for listening to my talk. Really grateful for all of you all. We'll hear from you again soon, my friend. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.